In this recording, we look at using integration to find the area between two curves. So suppose we have two curves represented by functions f of x and g of x. Let's suppose, let's say, that this is the curve represented by f of x here. Let's suppose that is the curve represented by g of x. And we'll look at a particular example in just a minute. But you'll notice in the example I've drawn, f of x is greater than g of x. And suppose we're interested in the area between the curves, looking from some value x equals a to another value x equals b. You'll notice that f of x is greater than g of x for all x between a and b in the example I've drawn. In this case, we can then find the area between the curves, which is the area I've shaded here, as the integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x with respect to x. That is, it's the integral from a to b of the upper curve minus the lower curve. And one case where this method can be used is when we're finding the area of the region bounded by two curves. So let's consider an example of that type. Finding the area of the region bounded by the curves y equals x minus 2 squared and y equals 2x minus 1. In a case like this, you'll notice it looks similar to what we saw as the general principle, except that here the values of x that we're wanting to consider this over are not given. But because it is a region bounded by the curves, if we look at where the curves intersect and look at a graph to see the bounded region, that will give us the values that we would want to integrate over in order to find the area between these curves. So let's have a bit of a look at a rough sketch of these two curves to start with. So we need to start by thinking about what each of these curves looks like. First of all, what is y equals x minus 2 squared? And y equals x squared is just an upwards parabola with the vertex at the origin. So what's the effect of this minus 2? Well, I will actually shift the parabola horizontally so that the vertex is at 2, 0 instead of 0, 0, but it will still be an upwards parabola. So drawing an approximate sketch of this, y equals x minus 2 squared will look something like that. What about y equals 2x minus 1? Approximately what would that look like? Well, that is a straight line with gradient 2, and the y-intercept is going to be at 0, negative 1. So that's going to be a straight line. Let's just have a look at what that would look like. So here you'll see I've added this line to the graph. It has positive gradient and we can see that it intersects the parabola represented by x minus 2 squared in these points here. I have now added shading to show the area we're considering. We now can see the points of intersection from this approximate sketch. It looks like those will both be positive x values, but we'll find out what those are more specifically in just a minute. We can also now determine which is the upper curve, which in this case in the region that's bounded by the curves is clearly the straight line. So that's the 2x minus 1. So therefore, I'm just going to call that f of x, consistent with the notation I used over the page. While a parabola is clearly the lower of the two curves in that region, so that is g of x equal to x minus 2 squared. And we saw that the formula then was of the form the integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x with respect to x. Therefore, it's going to be the integral from some values a to b of 2x minus 1 for the upper curve f of x in this case minus x minus 2 squared for the lower curve g of x. 
I'm returning to our diagram for a minute, A and B are going to be the x-coordinates of the points where these curves intersect. So how then do we find the point of intersection of the curves? Well, we can do that algebraically by simply setting them equal to each other, as at the points of intersection we must have both a common x value and common y value. That is, to find the intersection of the curves, we can solve x minus 2 squared equal to 2x minus 1. This left-hand side will then become x squared minus 4x plus 4 equal to 2x minus 1. Easiest to solve this by rearranging so that we have 0 on the right-hand side which means subtracting 2x and adding 1 to both sides. That then gives us a quadratic x squared minus 6x plus 5 equals 0. We could either use the quadratic formula or factorisation. In this case that looks pretty quick to factorise as x minus 5 times x minus 1 equals 0. Therefore we can see that the two curves intersect at x equals 5 or 1. Therefore, returning to our diagram, we can now replace what we had written as a and b with 1 and 5. And it also means for the integral we're looking at, we now know that the area between the curves in that bounded region will be integrating from 1 to 5, this expression here. So if we expand and simplify the expression for the integrand first to make it a bit easier to integrate this expression. Expanding the brackets and then simplifying again, we find that 2x minus 1 minus x minus 2 all squared actually becomes negative x squared plus 6x minus 5. So we're integrating that with respect to x from 1 to 5. Then the antiderivative of negative x squared is just negative x cubed divided by 3, 6x. That becomes 3x squared when we integrate it. And 5 becomes 5x. So therefore, we're going to be evaluating this expression over the interval from 1 to 5. And recall, when we're working out a definite integral, it's the antiderivative at the upper limit, which is 5 in this case, minus the antiderivative at the lower limit, which is 1. Therefore, the area between the curves is going to become negative 5 cubed on 3. And notice that minus sign is out the front, so it's basically minus 1 times 5 cubed, then plus 3 times 5 squared, minus 5 times 5. Then from that we are subtracting the negative of 1 cubed divided by 3 plus 3 times 1 squared minus 5 times 1. And if you simplify that, you end up with the area between the curves, in this case equal to 32 divided by 3. So you'll notice in working out the area of the region bounded by the curves, one of the things that I spent the most time on was making sure the diagram was very clear as to where did the two curves meet, which we're able to work out by solving the right-hand sides in terms of x equal to each other, and also making sure we had an approximate diagram so that it was clear which curve was the upper curve and which one was the lower curve.